So we're going to this decolumer out of the model. This is the 1865 version, and based on the serial number, this machine was manufactured in 1876. Just open up the lid, fold up the crank handle there. Uh, so to enter a number, you just slide up these pointers, the number you desire. So this is your ones, tens, and hundreds, so to enter 123, we'll slide up to 100. Three, and give the handle one tune. There we go, 123. And the counter counts up one in the first position. So we can do four, five, six, seven hundred and eighty nine, eighty nine hundred and eighty seven. Six hundred and fifty-four, and then three hundred and twenty one. And there we go. You can see our total is three thousand three hundred and thirty, and we counted six operations. So that's for addition. To clear out, we just lift it up a little bit and then turn. This handle to clear the counter, and this handle to clear the accumulator. For subtraction, say we had, we'll just leave it at 321. Have that number entered. We want to subtract, say, 9. Set 9 there. Put this switch to subtraction, and turn the handle. As you can see, we have 321. Minus 9 is 312. And as you can see, the counter had counted up 1 for the addition and then it counted back to 0. So decrease one account for the subtraction. If we do another subtraction, say we wanted to subtract 3. Now this will count up 1. Now we have a, um, a net 1 subtraction. So basically, the way that the counter works is it will cancel out addition and subtraction. So it counts one direction for additions and then it counts the other direction for subtraction. So if you have you know, three additions and then do one subtraction, the counter will read two. Right now we had one addition and two subtractions, so the counter reads one in the subtraction direction. If we switch back to additions, say we want to enter, say we want to add now one. Now we have zero in the counter because it canceled, canceled out our two subtractions with two additions, basically. So for multiplication, say we're going to multiply 625 by 625. So we'll enter our 625 here on the input sliders. And now, make sure we're in addition. We want to enter this five times. Basically, you want to enter 625, 625 times. So we want the counter to read 625. So in this position, we need to enter 5. So I'll enter it 5 times. Like so. And we'll lift this up and slide it over one position. And now we need to read a 2 in the counter here. So I'll enter it 2 times. Process repeat slide over, and now we need to enter it six times. And there we go. Uh, 390,625 is the correct answer. Slide that back in so hopefully it's all in the frame there. 390,625. Can now clear out. Now for division, move this all the way over, like so. We can enter our first number just via these little twirlers here. So say we're going to do 355. I've entered 355. We divide that by 113. 113. And now this involves a little bit of thinking, I should say involves rather. 
So 113 is less than 355. So we'll switch to subtraction and do once. This is still less. Oh, again, and it's still less. 113 is less than 129. Now we've got 16 directly above us. So that's smaller, so we need to shift over by one position. Now we've got 160, that's larger, so we do it once. Now we're 47, that's smaller. So we go again. Now down to 18. Now we shift over and go again. 67. Back to 370, so we keep going. Now we're down to 105, which is less than 113. Shift over again. Now we've got uh, 1050, which is much larger, so we continue. Now we're down to 33, now we're back up to 330. Oops, messed up, went a little bit too far that one. Let's switch back to addition and add that back. So uh, in this red, that's 104, which is less than 113, so we actually have to stop here. So my machine is moving a little bit, but there we go. Um, so we're out of shifting, so we have to stop here. This is our remainder, 104 which would actually be, you know, 0 0.000, so on. Um, and our result, uh, you just have to know the decimal point would go here because the two things that we divided have the same number of decimal points in, so we're expecting one digit past the decimal point. Uh, normally this machine would have little pegs you could stick in here to indicate that, but unfortunately over the past 140 years, they've gone missing. But this would be our decimal point here, so 3.141592, which is the correct result. So. Clear this out. So I hope you enjoyed that little look at all four operations on the e-collar thermometer. Uh, thank you for watching.